everybody. Pablo, how's it going? I'm number 11. I'm <laughs> Don't say. That's right. Podcast number 11, pabloandwest.com. Yep, and the topic today is... Oh, what is the topic it's today? Near it's near and dear to our hearts. That's right. It's uh, the department we somewhat work in, right? Yeah. And deliver uh, an innovation. It is? Tech integration. Tech integration. It's what we do, and yeah. uh, it is near and dear to our hearts. It's a passion so area. Let's get it started. Ramp it yeah, up. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, first, before we do that, if you would not. go over to iTunes and give us a five-star review and leave us some comments and feedback, we would very much appreciate it. And thank you to everyone who has done that so far. Uh, we we love you, as we like to say. Hey, so let me start with a little quote. I love that. It might be a little edgy. Ooh. Might be a little edgy, but yeah. it's okay. Let's yeah. let's start with that edge and come to the other side. You know, what do whatever. You got? What do you got? Any teacher that can be replaced with Ooh. a computer deserves to be. Yes. That's David Thornburg. Yeah, yeah. Futurist. Yeah. Kind of takes a look at tech and what's happening and you know what's up and yeah. coming, and it's a little harsh, but I think in this day and age, yeah. It's all around us. It's never, yeah. you know, new tech is actually easy to come by. It's new ideas. Mm, good that's point. a struggle, yeah. right? And so we just need to keep my, that my, keep mindful of that. And I think that's where we're headed in this episode. Yeah, in this episode of uh, talking about tech integration, uh, we're going to be exploring that idea about it's not just having a tool, it's how you use it. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. All right, well... I would like to delve into our personal past as students. Please, please do. And um, so just talking about our experiences as students in the classroom with tech integration. Um, so I will just recall, should I go forward? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, I, I just recall, um, I think the only technology I saw was an overhead projector. Um, Might have been a film strip. Yep. Um, That's my number one. Go and then to. in high school, that was elementary. But in high school, we actually had a computer class. And um, so in that class, we had access to personal computers and we learned programming in basic. Um, so in terms of tech integration into my educational experience, um, I can't say much more than that. How about you? I mean, the, yeah, I'm going to go back to the, the film strips, the film projector. I was in elementary school, yeah. the go-to guy, the film projector monitor, if you will. <laughs> I loved that job. I loved um, I loved splicing the film or taking the film oh, yeah. and, and putting yeah. it through the projector. Oh, to start it off. Pablo, so when it was projector Pablo, time, boom, you, I'm your man. Can you get the projector going? But, but you're right. In terms of the integration of technology mm. into my learning outside of watching that film. Okay, you just triggered uh, yeah, uh, yeah, a memory. Uh, I saw Star Wars in the classroom on a VHS in the, in the eighth grade. What? Yeah, yeah, I didn't see it in the theater. So tech integration to me actually help me watch star wars because but you now parents, you bring up a good point okay maybe moving into our teaching yeah especially er, early teaching yeah that that's how technology was used yeah is, was, let's show a movie let's show a movie that yeah. was the yeah and actually the our teachers went on strike in uh when i was in high school and one of the teachers who didn't have tenure he showed the terminator so that's the how terminator I, that's how i saw the terminator wow yeah. I'm watching lots of movies up yeah. there. Yeah, nice. Didn't happen a lot, but I do remember those. But times. outside, like of the chalkboard, because those are mm -hmm. those were the technologies of of the of you know the day. Yeah, especially <laughs> yeah the 1900s, the chalkboard, <laughs> the new laminated desktops. Yeah, maybe a maybe a swivel in your mm. no probably Not static for me. no yeah. yeah anyways. <laughs> we don't that have much to like we as students. Well, hopefully, about. you out there have more uh, yeah. history with technology as students. Yeah. But let's move into personal stories of tech tech integration as, as teachers. Teachers. Yeah. So um, I probably the one I remember in terms of efficacy and um, novelty was I was teaching students writing. I was a high school English teacher, and AOL uh, was a big um, deal, and I would tutor my students at night using the instant messenger system. And so I would teach all day and then I would go home and at a certain point I would say, hey kids, I'm gonna be online at seven or That's eight. Nice. And I would just give them feedback on their writing yeah. that I couldn't afford to, um, during the course of the day, there weren't enough uh, minutes. So if the students wanted help, they would just ping me on AOL IM and we would chat about their work. 
Um, so that that's one of the standouts for me. I, I don't know what what about you? Oh, I got a plethora, my yeah, friend. Go for this it. is um, I don't know. I say this is my thing. This is what this is your thing for sure. <laughs> so I started out. I've said this before in one of the podcasts, but I started out with a tablet, and that was and and don't mm-hmm. think of it as the tablets that we know today. They weren't an interactive tablet, meaning a screen with actual computer. Yeah. It's just a tablet that connected to, to a projector. The cursor, right? Yeah, it's just basically a cursor yeah. or a, a mouse. Yeah, if it you allowed will. you proximity. Yeah, it allowed me to be wireless, yeah. and I thought that yeah. was phenomenal. Yeah. So on my Dell or HP, whatever I had at the time. And that was a desktop. Yeah. I would connect to that, which was connected to my projector cool. with all these wires all over the place. But it did. It allowed me to improve my classroom management, yeah. allowed me to move about the classroom. That Sweet. was huge. But moving on from there, again, these are all just tools, right? But right. there was a need. Everyone had its own purpose, right? Yeah. And so um, I moved into using the iPods, the both the Classic, which just mm-hmm. had the dial, and the iPod Touch. Now, what did I use? those for is I wanted to again multiply myself how or mm. duplicate myself how was I going to do that I figured out that I could create videos of my lectures yes I was lecturing but <laughs> what I did do is you know because when you lecture you do it one time and if the kids don't get it they're feverishly You're writing trying and down. trying to catch up and so on and so forth this allowed me to videotape yeah. record myself put it on an iPod, and granted, back then, I had to sync each one up in the morning. Wow. Every time I'd, I'd record at night, I'd sync them up in the That's morning, cool. and right before school started, and I'd have them ready. And they would all get iPods, either one to every two, or yeah. I borrowed, or I checked them out from the district. They had some laying around. Yeah. Like, I'm your man. I'll take those. So those had, like, math? Was it math? What's that? They like, had math lessons math on Math lectures. Them. Yeah, math oh, lectures on cool. them. It was super cool. It really helped me out a lot. Um, moving from so this is kind of I, as a student I would have been like excited to go get like the iPod with the math lesson from my teacher like a video uh, like I could have in my own hand my own personal space that I I would have liked that yeah it was a lot of work but I had a good time doing it yeah. but I I knew it would add value at least in that in that point of time that. Sure that students would learn, could allow to learn at their own pace, Yeah, right? They, they could rewind, stop, absolutely. They They're not gonna rewind yeah. you at the front. Right. Like everybody is not gonna ask the question, yeah. yeah. you know, and I could move about the room and, and actually answer those questions. Uh, just moving forward real quick, uh, in, I was, and I'm not gonna go over all of them, but I'll list some of them. I see interactive, <laughs> interactive whiteboards, yeah. I was huge. When it came out, I was in, I went for some, um, got some money anyways, uh, that was uh, either donated yeah. or I won, won some grants, and we purchased the first interactive whiteboards in our district and at my school site. Nice. So we got a couple going there. Right. Um, and the power was in the software there. The power was in building lessons for students. Um, uh, the iPad One, first mm-hmm. to have that in the district as yeah. a whole classroom set. Yeah. No camera, people. There's no camera. What do you do with this thing? It's just a little tablet. It's a computer. I mean, but what do you do with it? Yeah. You get online. I yeah. mean, you got to start somewhere. Yeah. Um, but then we moved into the next variations of that, the iPad Two, and so on. And then just the Google Apps, the Suites. I mean, I've used it all. The uh, created podcast, mm. GarageBand. Yeah. Um, I, I could go on and mm-hmm. on. It's just the the power of Utilizing the technology, yes, as a tool, but to create long-lasting, interactive, engaging, mm. individualized, personalized, just discoverable moments for students. Yeah. That is why I did it. I didn't do it to just have the next shiny yeah. tool. It's interesting. I think, one, you're multiplying resources. Absolutely. So if students can look back at a resource versus um, if they only have access to you at that moment in that time in the classroom. So that that's that's powerful. And then there's something to be said for uh, the teacher making a video of themselves because it allows the students to attend to that material in a different way because they know you're not judging them. They're not looking. Uh, the video is just for them to consume the content. There's not a teacher looking back going like, are you paying attention? There's right. no judgment. Right. And so it's 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 a different dynamic. So it allows a different type of interaction with the material, um, separate from what um, what social constructs we might have about does the teacher think I'm smart or uh, attentive in class. Totally. And just one more thing to add to that before we close this part out is when I 
the, as I got going in the, my teaching career, especially the last four, five, six years, I was able to capitalize on how I how I created my classroom structure or the um, what is it uh, uh, classroom environment, okay. like <laughs> you know, learning spaces. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> it got me there for a second. But when I produced my learning spaces, I was able to produce a space where. Um, I had students listening to the videos mm, or watching the videos. Right. I had students with me in small groups. Yeah. And then I had students talking to each other and they'd rotate through this in the 50. Oh, that's cool. to, and I had double block period, so I could do it one way or the other. Yeah. Uh, but I start, tried to stay true to a 50 to 60 minute period yeah. and it worked out really well. Yeah. And I just got better and better at it. And I, I thought that was a way again to duplicate myself and still, you know, subscribe to the needs of students who needed help yeah who needed help and yeah. i gave them almost that one-on-one -on -one help i think it's interesting that the technology enabled you to change the relationship between you and the students because in a small group three or five or seven students with you the interaction is going to be i would i would venture to say much richer oh, and students can ask yeah. more personalized Loads. questions and there's less of a fear of being embarrassed in front of other students versus asking a question in, in front of 35 other students no thanks right you know so that that's great i love the fact that you you're changing the relationship between the teacher and the student by using technology to to like you i mean it's it's a little bit of a joke to say you cloned yourself but you were right absolutely playing um, with space and time in, that you can kind of create a different learning environment love yeah. it I still I, love it. I love it. So I'm just going to throw out yeah. a lot of things I did uh, later after I left the classroom were um, professional development using websites and building online courses. And then I had the opportunity to work for a virtual school. So the only way my students got their content was through the learning management system and they would see me once a week. So that was revolutionary for me, like had to make some pretty big mind, mind shifts. Yeah. Can I ask, how do you think a teacher could utilize that idea of a virtual school, mm -hmm. but you don't have that, let's just say, but how could you apply some of the features yeah, of a yeah. virtual school in your classroom? Yeah. So the number one recommendation I would say in terms of applying something like that is to start with the discussion board where you can post a question and then asynchronous, asynchronously students can post replies. So we would have, and this sounds incredible and you may not believe it, but we would have like, especially in our history, social science courses where we had um, a teacher who was just really good with discussion boards, mm -hmm. he would have students come in from the year before and mm. come back and reply to students who were learning the material because they were just that it. engaged with how people were doing with the questions. That's so cool. it became this really extended, awesome learning community. And then of course you have a student we had rolling enrollment. So you get a student in January, they could go back mm. and reply to people who had passed through in October. So it was this really interesting way to look at learning versus, hey, we're learning it on a Thursday and on Friday we're on to something else. Um, yeah, so that's, uh, we that's did cool. other that's things with Minecraft and live streaming yeah. and blogging and video creation. But uh, yeah, I mean, a couple of personal experience. There is, and yeah. I think today, the things that most most schools and school districts, I would I would assume, yeah. at least have available to them is the Google Suite. Yeah. Even even if your school district isn't, you have it personally as a yeah. teacher. You can utilize. You may have some form of an LMS, um, whether it be PowerSchool Learning yeah. or Edmodo or there's a, yeah a, there's a lot of them out there, and yeah. No, I was, just, I was just thinking there's there's just so much out there, but I want to come back to what yeah. we talked about, and that is tools are just tools. Like, yeah, and they're, they're, they're there to build. What I heard in your stories were the tools were for the, the learning relationship. Sure. It, it was about the people you were trying to communicate with and what they were thinking, and could you really get the feedback close enough to the student who needed it at the moment they needed it versus... Oh, here's a cool app. I'm going to try it because it's new and it's cool. I mean, that's about the app. And your Absolutely. stories were all about 
the relationship between the teacher and the student. At least, you know, you always want to. Now, it's nice to have a cool app and it's nice yeah. to have a shiny, <laughs> but you can only have that that new, like, let's say new iPad once. Yeah. Regardless of how many iterations of iPads we bring into the district, once a student has an iPad, it's just the iPad. And right. that becomes, it can become mundane. It's, yeah. that's done. What are you going to do to produce, produce for yeah. the students that are going to allow them to shine yeah. and be excited about learning yeah. with that iPad? Yeah, and if you don't, so it's structure, super important. If you don't structure that iPad use for learning, it'll be used absolutely. for something else. So, or whatever tool yeah. you have, Chromebooks, absolutely. laptops, yep. et cetera. Et cetera. All right, so we're ready for our, our quote from the outside expert. Uh, we had a yeah. cool, um, a cool search. Uh, I went into YouTube and typed technology integration that's what i did and i found this edutopia um, yeah, no, it's, video it's good fine and um so we're just going to play a, a few seconds of that this is an instructional coach from pennsylvania andrew halter uh, and some of these uh words resonated so quickly with us we just wanted to share this and then we're going to talk a little bit more about it uh so here we go idea comes before the tools. You, you need to have a good solid instructional idea and then find out how you can enhance it with technology. That's that's the short story. Uh, sounds like we should have wrote that. Yeah, it's no, sounds great like, job. Sounds like money. Andrew. So Andrew says start with the in instructional idea or I would say objective or what you want to accomplish instead of there's so so much wisdom in this cuz uh, and we experience this in our district. A lot of times people contact us and say, come out and help me learn. And then what follows learn is the newest, coolest thing. Yeah. And it's not really tied to what their responsibilities are in terms of standards or outcomes. And it should be the reverse. Like, right. I really want to teach this and have my students demonstrate right. competency in this. Can you then come around that idea? That's how it yeah. should be. Absolutely. That's how it should be. So um, a little rabbit hole that we went down is Andrew um, Halter. We'll put this in the uh, show notes, but he has a, a blog um, and it's called uh, Teacher Tested Tried and Two True Tips from the Classroom. Um, and then he had this article on Alan November. So we're going to bring up Alan mm -hmm. November yeah. a little bit later yep. in our, um, our top list for this topic. Um, but um, great job, uh, Andrew, for, for sharing that that idea of keeping the the instructional aim first and foremost when thinking about Absolutely. technology. Absolutely. It's huge. Yeah, yeah. All right, Pablo, tool of the week. You want to talk about that? Oh, the tool of the week. So we thought we would go with, and it's something either maybe you have used or have not used. I've used it. But it's an assessment tool. Yeah. And it's very simple. It's free if you want it to be. I love free. Or Yeah, free is me. <laughs> or you can pay for these cards. And those are the Plickers cards. Plickers. Use Plickers. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I love Plickers. And essentially, if, if you don't know what Plickers are, just go to Plickers.com and yeah. you'll find it. But the idea is that you give each student a card. Each student, each card uh, looks somewhat like a QR code. Mm -hmm. If you're familiar with QR codes, and they're shaped in a way that they're individualized to that person. Yeah. And on each side, so there's four sides of it. Each has a letter yeah. being A, B, C, D. Yeah. And you can utilize those as either multiple choice questions yep. or true false questions. So yeah. it could just be A, B or A, so B, C, D. So how does it work? So essentially, yeah. yeah. So you have an app. You as the teacher has has the app on their phone. I believe both Android and um, iOS have mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. uh, you load it up, and then essentially all you do is let's say, um, where uh, where did King Kong? I don't know where this came from, by the way. <laughs> I don't know why King Kong's on my mind. But what what uh, what building did King Kong climb in New York? And yeah. you could put a you know the Chrysler Building, building uh, B, e, Statue of Liberty. Yeah, you're good. C, C Empire State Building. Oh, and D, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Rockefeller Building. Boom, this guy's got it. <laughs> Glad I have this partner here. So then you have the kids uh, look at their card, turn over right side up the letter they want. They flash it up. They all hold it up. You yes. just put out your, your phone or your yep. tablet, 
scan the room, it's like magic. It's like magic. It fills in and automatically in real time, you can see yeah. the actual results of who's got it right. Does the class really know what yeah. we just learned? I mean, it's a great little formative assessment tool that you can use it's real quick. Yeah, it's yeah. real fun too. So, and it's just a different way to change it up. If if you have iPads, if you have Chromebooks, if you do a lot of stuff digitally, yeah. mix it up, hand out the cards. It's just a different thing. It keeps it keeps it different. Yeah, I, I love it. Uh, something to add on that is um, the focus is not the device nope. because the teacher has one and the students really don't need anything but the Plickers cards, which are just printables. Um, and then secondly, you can have, let's say you have 30 students, is pass out 15 cards, have them partner up. Absolutely. So they have to discuss and then they respond. And it, it's a it's a great tool for, for those reasons. And and more i believe on the website you get 40 cards to print if you want to print yeah. them or you can order a set from them fully laminated for like six to ten dollars somewhere in there so it's not yeah. huge cost so those will last you a little longer or you can laminate them yourself yeah so you can actually get the data back from like who has card number one i can Absolutely. know what they answered yeah um yeah good stuff really That's, good i, I love uh, yeah it's free good and stuff. It, it's i've used it before i couldn't believe how quick it uh, I gathered the data from what my students were saying. Yeah. yeah, awesome. Good stuff. All right, well, we have a top list of um, things to keep in mind. I was kind of brainstorming, and um, I don't know what Pablo thinks about this, but I was, I was thinking, I was writing my own, and then I found Alan November's, and I'm gonna use his. Yeah, But um, I was just thinking, when I was generating my own top list, is keep the student in mind first, the instructional okay. objective second, and then the tool third. Makes you a lot know? of sense. Yeah, okay. don't pick a tool that doesn't fit the objective or that students can't work with. So yeah, it's that whole backward planning yeah. thing, right? Like, where yeah. are you really going? What What's your journey, and where's it going to end? Right. And then, how do I get there? Yeah. So Alan November's uh, blog, which we found found through um, Andrew Halter. Actually, I had the privilege of seeing uh, Alan November. He came to the first uh, high school I worked at and then spoke on an in service day. Um, so I'm a fan for a long time. I've been following him. But he has this uh, six questions, the transformational six. So I'm going to read those just for your benefit. Yeah. And then I'm just going to say my caveat. So one, did the assignment build capacity for critical thinking on the web? Mm -hmm. So when you're going into uh, planning a lesson, did the assignment develop new lines of inquiry? Number two. Number three, are there opportunities for students to make their thinking visible? Nice. Number four, are there opportunities to broaden the perspective of the conversation with authentic audiences from around the world? Mm. Ooh, heavy, heavy question. Number five, is there an opportunity for students to con create a contribution or a purposeful work? And number six, does the assignment demo, quote, best in the world examples of content and skill? Hmm. So to those questions, which I think really um, are challenging when you think about any any type of lesson, like how yeah. am I connecting this to an audience around the world? Um, I don't always think about that, but the truth is every lesson can have that in it, and that's a powerful thought. So my own caveat is I would not maybe not phrase these as yes, no questions, because then you just get like kind of, oh, I scored a three out of a six, and I'm a 50%, I'm a failure type of response, but I would just add the word how, like how did the assignment build ca capacity, and then you start to think in a more open mindset uh, type of way. Yeah, so that's, shout out to Alan November and Andrew Halter for um, those uh, those lists. And a, a, just because we're talking about technology today, integration, and um, right now, just how to build authentic, let's say, yeah. um, projects, or at least the, at least the opportunity for students, and that is to have maybe utilize social media, mm. uh, Twitter. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just get get your students' work out there yeah. for people to comment on. Yeah, and I, it works pretty. I think uh, yeah. one of the hashtags I believe is called comments for kids, oh, and cool. that's using the actual number four in, for the for the word four. And uh, you can do hashtag comments for kids, and you know ask people to go into yeah. uh, a website or wherever you're housing some um, some projects that students have done. And I think it's a good way to get feedback or just comments on their work. Yeah, I love that you said that. Um, last week, we took a group of fourth graders to the local zoo, and they presented their research on endangered animals to the zookeepers. And one of our TOSAs was taking pictures and kind of writing like an interesting fact from the report. 
um, and then tweeting it out. And so she was able to share during the presentation when the students were uh, presenting the research to the zookeepers and animal experts, um, the American Natural History Society had actually like interacted with one of our tweets. And so that was, um, that was great. So just to get that feedback um, in real time via social media, that um, made an impression on the students and me that you know, the world can be watching when yeah. it comes to our learning. Absolutely. Well, Pablo, we actually have already done our social media shout out, but just to reiterate, on Twitter, it's Hampton underscore IC. That's where you can reach uh, Andrew, Andrew Halter. And I think yep. he has another um, counterpart there on uh, in Pennsylvania in his instructional coaching uh, department. And uh, Alan November. So his uh, handle on Twitter is twitter.com slash global learner. Connect with them, tell them uh, we sent you over there, check out their resources and what they're up to, and uh, you won't be sorry you did. Remember, it's just a tool. It's just a tool. You still are the one in charge. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, you get to run these things. That's right. Love come, it, come love it. Go teachers, go. Go teachers, go. Ah, man. Love it. Big fan, big fan. All right. All right, everybody. Keep doing that magic. We done. Peace. Thank you.